It's critical to understand how to properly calculate Q, the first moment of the outward area, in order to adequately calculate the shear stress of a cross section of a beam using our transverse shear stress equation of VQ over IT. As the name implies, it is the moment of an area. And this area depends on the plane of interest that you choose. So for this beginning example, our plane of interest will be located above the neutral axis. Remembering that the neutral axis passes through the centroid of the section. Our outward area is the area between that plane of interest and one of the extreme fibers. It could be either the top or the bottom extreme fiber. For now, we'll just consider the outward area from the plane of interest to the top extreme fiber. The value y bar prime that you see in your equation on the RUC is the distance between the centroid of the section, or the neutral axis, and the centroid of the outward area, as depicted by this distance. So when calculating Q, multiply the outward area by the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of the outward area. For rectangular cross-sections, this process is relatively straightforward. For composite cross-sections, however, it's a little bit more complicated. Let's consider this W18 by 60 shape, and we'll discuss calculating the first moment of the outward area at various planes of interest. To begin with, our first plane of interest will be at the neutral axis. Our outward area is therefore the area of a T-section from the plane of interest to the top extreme fiber. This entire shaded area is the outward area. Now if we were to then calculate the area to the centroid, or the distance to the centroid of that entire T-shape, that would be our Y-bar prime, which we could then use to calculate the first moment of the outward area. But this is actually an unnecessary step. If we notice that we have two rectangular shapes, we can break this T section down into two rectangles, then find the outward area of each piece and the distance to the centroid from the neutral axis of each piece. And simply sum these values together. So let's go ahead and begin to put some numbers into this equation. If we want to calculate the first moment of the outward area, at the neutral axis. The area of piece number one is the width of the flange, 7.555 inches times the thickness of the flange, 0 0.695 inches. Now we need the distance from the neutral axis of the entire cross section to the centroid of that shape. That would be 18.24 inches divided by two, getting half of the total depth and then subtracting off half of the thickness of the flange. So these two components are the outward area of shape one and the Y bar prime of shape number one. Now to this, we need to add the outward area of shape number two, which will be a height of 18. 0.24 inches divided by 2 minus the thickness of the flange. That will give us this distance. Then multiplying that by the thickness of the flange, or the thickness of the web, 0.415 inches, and now multiplying this by the distance to the centroid, which will be one half of this quantity that we have already come up with for the height of this little area. In other words, 
this is the outward area of the second piece of the cross section that we're interested in, and this is the distance to the centroid. Calculating these values, we find that the first moment of that first piece of area is 46.062 inches cubed, and the first moment of the piece number two is 14.728 is cubed. Summing these for the total first moment of outward area at the neutral surface, we find a value of 60.79 inches cubed, which would be, then be the value that we would use in our calculation of shear stress. Note that the thickness term in the denominator of that equation will be the thickness of your plane of interest or in other words, the width of your plane of interest. So for this problem, this case, where we're looking at the plane of interest at the neutral axis, the width of the web will be the thickness value that we would use in our shear stress equation. Let's now consider our plane of interest at this web flange interface. In this case, then, our outward area is simply the area of the top flange. And our y bar prime, the distance from the centroid of the composite cross section to the centroid of the outward area will be this distance here. So then taking a look at our equation for the first moment of the outward area at the web flange interface, our outward area will be the width of the flange times the thickness of the flange. And that will give us our outward area times half of the depth minus half of the thickness of the flange. Evaluating this expression, we find a first moment of the outward area at the web flange interface to be 46.06 inches cubed, which would then again be the first moment of the outward area used in this expression. Now at the web flange interface, we have a small dilemma when we begin to investigate the thickness, because we could consider the thickness just the width of the web itself, or we could consider the thickness of the entire flange. In other words, the width of the flange. In this case, we actually need to consider both. And this is why in the shear stress distribution of a composite section such as this, you'll see a jump in the shear stress at this web flange interface. And finally, let's consider a plane of interest that is located right along the top fiber of the beam. In this case, this is a plane of interest. Notice in this case, we have no outward area. Therefore, the first moment of the outward area must be zero. Subsequently, our shear stress at that point must be zero. So the shear stress is zero at the outermost fibers. Well, based on the values for first moment of the area and the thickness, we'll see that the maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral axis.